Good afternoon. I'm Rain Musni. This is Newsfeed. Local shares notched modest gains, largely ignoring the escalating tensions in the Middle East. The Philippine Stock Exchange Index went up by 22 points, or nearly a third, to close just above the 7,400 level. Four of the six sub-indices were in the green, led by mining and oil, climbing more than 2% as precious metals were on demand amid the uncertainty. But cautious sentiment prevailed, with value turnover easing to 4.3 billion pesos. Market breadth was also negative, as losers beat gainers 114 to 91. International Container Terminal Services of billionaire Enrique Razon was the day's most actively traded stock, rising nearly 3%. Traders also picked up stocks of Ayala Lead Globe and Ayala Land, with the telecom company finishing up one and a quarter percent while the property giant ended flat. Turning now to the spiraling crisis in the Middle East, Israel has called for an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council following Iran's missile attack. Iran fired a salvo of missiles at Israel in response to Israel's incursion in Lebanon, marking a steep escalation of tensions in the region. Most of the missiles were intercepted by Israel, which has issued this stern warning to Tehran. We will be very clear. We will defend our people. We will act. Iran will soon feel the consequences of their actions. The response will be painful. Meanwhile, airlines are scrambling to divert flights as tensions in the Middle East boil over. Israel's neighbors also closed their airspace following Iran's attack, prompting airlines to divert flights or air divert flights anywhere they could. The latest disruptions are expected to deal a further blow to an industry already facing curbs due to conflicts between Israel and Hamas and Russia and Ukraine. Back here at home, President Bongbong Marcos signs into law the bill imposing value-added tax on foreign digital services providers. The new law imposes a 12% VAT on companies like Netflix, Disney Plus and HBO. The president says this will generate additional revenue for the government and level the playing field for local providers. If you are reaping the rewards of a fruitful digital economy here, it is only right that you contribute also to its growth. After all, whether you are a small tech startup or a global tech giant based halfway around the world, if you are making money here in the Philippines, you're part of our community. And with that comes a shared responsibility. The president adds the new law will allow the government to collect more than 100 billion pesos in the next five years, enough to build 42,000 classrooms, more than 6,000 rural health units, and 7,000 kilometers of farm-to-market roads. 5% of the revenues generated will also be allocated to the local creative industry. This means our artists, filmmakers, musicians, the very people who fill our platforms with stories and with content will directly benefit. It ensures that our creative talents are not just surviving in a competitive digital market, but will be allowed to prosper. Fairness, inclusivity, and progress. Christmas has started in Venezuela, but the festive mood is nowhere to be found. By decree of strongman Nicolas Maduro that Christmas begins in October, decorations have been put up in the capital, Caracas. But the mood is certainly not jolly. Many residents say they see no reason to celebrate in the wake of economic hardships and political controversies hounding their country. Others believe it's all just a distraction. Maduro was re-elected in July for a third consecutive year or six-year term, but his victory has not been recognized by the U.S., European Union, and several Latin American countries due to allegations of widespread fraud. And before we go, here's a look at today's market winners and losers. And those are the news this hour. I'm Rain Musni. Stay tuned to BNC on Free TV Channel 31, Channel 24 on Signal, and on our website, bnc.ph. Thank you so much for watching.